How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to my channel and to another uh, movie log, which I haven't done in quite a while. So let's talk about some of the films that I've been watching recently. And I'd like to start out by showing you a book that I read recently. This is Failsafe, a book from 1962. This is a book that I inherited from my father when he passed away back in 2004. A nice little stack of books that he had on the shelf for decades. And I, I have them now. And this is finally got around to reading one of them. Um, of course, Failsafe is a pretty pretty famous novel. It's all about, it, it's a Cold War thriller. It's all about um, the, the military system that supposedly was set in place to keep nuclear war from happening between the United States and the Soviet Union. And in this story, something in the machinery goes terribly wrong and it brings us to, uh, well, it brings us into a, a terrible crisis. So I didn't know that much about the plot. I kind of knew what it was going to be about, but read the book. And I have to say, this is one of the few times where when I got to the end of the book and was reading the last paragraph, um, I sat there unable to move and, and a chill just came up my back. It was that effective. I was quite amazed and uh, very, very excited about finally finally getting to read this book. So when one of the Criterion sales came along last year, I picked up the movie, Failsafe, from 1964, directed by Sidney Lumet. And I put off watching it for quite a while because I was afraid that it wouldn't measure up to the excitement of the novel. But I finally got around to it, and I'm very glad that I did. They did change quite a few things, of course, for the film. They couldn't get into detailed character studies and all that sort of thing because it would have taken too much time. But uh, they did a really good job with this. Let's see. Now, we have a great cast of actors. Henry Fonda plays the President of the United States. Dan O'Herlihy, Walter Matthau, Frank Overton, Fritz Weaver, Edward Binns, a very young Larry Hagman. And also a very brief appearance by a guy named Dom DeLuise, who is not funny in this movie. He's very, very serious. Now, what's interesting about Failsafe, it came out the same year as uh, Stanley Kubrick's Dr. Strangelove, which, which is, of course, a very funny satire. But um, the, the book's Failsafe closely resembled another novel called Red Alert, written by a guy named Peter George. And that was the book on which... Uh, Dr. Strangelove was based. So Stanley Kubrick and Peter George filed suit for a copyright infringement and it was settled out of court. And one of the details of the settlement was that Columbia Pictures, which has, which was making Dr. Strangelove, they bought Failsafe, okay, which was an independently made production. And it was arranged that Kubrick's film would come out first. So Failsafe didn't do very well initially because it kind of uh, suffered in comparison to Kubrick's film. But on its own, it is a brilliant, brilliant piece of work and highly recommended, okay? Now, a couple of other criterions that I picked up last year. Brute Force, 1947, directed by Jules Dassin. It's a, a prison escape film uh, unlike any other that I've ever seen. I'd never seen this movie before, and I, it was incredible, really an incredible experience. Burt Lancaster uh, heads the cast. As, as a very unhappy prisoner. Now, Lancaster is always intense in all of his films, but he's matched in intensity by everybody else in the cast, especially Hume Cronin, who plays the uh, sort of the warden, the chief security officer. Well, he's not the warden. He's the chief security officer of the prison. Uh, I haven't seen that much of Hume Cronin in my life. He was really fantastic. We also have... Um, Let's see. Charles Bickford, Yvonne DiCarlo, Anne Blythe, Ella Raines, Jeff Corey, John Hoyt, Howard Duff, and Whit Bissell. A great cast of actors in a, a film that I can't believe I waited this long to see it, but also highly recommended. Brute Force. Uh, another film I bought from the Criterion Collection. Had sitting on the show for quite a while. Finally got around to watching The New World by Terrence Malick. And uh, it's a very long film, but it's, it's beautiful. Now, uh, Stars Colin Farrell, uh, Christopher Plummer, let's see, um, Christian Bale, and a very young girl, I think she was 14 at the time, Koryanka Kilcher, who plays the Indian maid based on um, the character of Pocahontas. I don't think that, I don't remember them calling her that in the film, but it's all about John Smith and Pocahontas. It's a beautiful movie. 
uh, great uh, location, set design, and the, it's partly in English and partly in the Algonquin language with subtitles, thank God. And it's it's very, very much worth seeing. New World, all right? And getting away from Criterions, here's a film that I, I picked up from Big Lots quite a few years ago and just left it on the shelf, not thinking much about it. Has anybody seen this? Slipstream, starring um, Anthony Hopkins. I think this was 2005 or 2007, one of the two. And Anthony Hopkins also wrote the film and directed it. This is one of the most amazing things I've seen in a long time. The real star of the film is whoever the cinematographer was and, and also the editor. It's, it's just brilliant to look at. It's, it's a visual feast and it has a, a fascinating plot. I'll just give you some of the bare bones here. I don't want to give too much away because there are some major surprises in the story. Aging screenwriter Felix Bonhoeffer, played by Anthony Hopkins, has lived his life in two states of existence, okay? Um, reality uh, and his own interior world, okay? While working on a murder mystery screenplay, Felix becomes baffled as his characters start appearing in his life, and his life starts slipping into his characters. Soon he is thrown into a, a vortex where dreams, time, and reality collide in an increasingly whirling slipstream, okay? Well, that's kind of a wordy uh, plot synopsis, but it won't give too much away. Uh, what's fascinating about this movie is it, it takes you into a storyline, a scenario. You think it's going to a certain place and then all of a sudden becomes something completely different. It's absolutely fascinating. I, it's kind of hard to compare with anything else, but it, it kind of makes me think of um, David Lynch's Mulholland Drive, just just in that kind of way where you, you think you're seeing something that you're not really seeing. It's really something. Uh, other actors in this, we have people like Fanula Flanagan, um, Christian Slater, Jeffrey Tambor, and John Turturro. Um, very interesting movie, which I guess didn't have much of a release and is not terribly well known, but I would I would absolutely recommend it to you. Now, a couple of other films that I picked up, and I believe I picked this up at either Dollar Tree or Big Lots. I can't remember now, but it's the, the original The Conjuring film, which I, I had heard a lot about these horror movies, and I, I'm always reluctant to buy modern horror films because I'm usually disappointed by how bloody and ghastly they are. But I figured for... Uh, a dollar, I wasn't going to be disappointed. I could just uh, check it out and see what happened. I was quite surprised at how good this was, how atmospheric it was, and how little violence and gore it actually had. I was really quite surprised. It was a very impressive horror film. And I also picked up The uh, Conjuring 2 at the uh, sale, that, for the going out of business sale for my local family video. So I watched both of these. Um, I like both of them very much. I think I like the first one better. But what I what I found most impressive about this film, both of the films, is that the uh, the, the married couple that that are at the heart of this film, um, the the two exorcists, um, or if that's what you want to call them, they are they are portrayed so beautifully, and it, it's always gratifying to me um, as as a believing Catholic. That, that anything to do with the Catholic religion is done in a very respectful, sort of a straightforward and believable manner. These people are very, very serious Catholics, who, but they're also very real, complicated, and interesting people who are not fanatics. They're not crazy. They're not, you know, there's no, they don't do anything bad. They, they do only good. And I, I actually uh, was quite gratified by that. So it's nice to see some modern horror films that are, in my opinion, definitely well done and worthwhile. So, and finally, one of the few films from 2020 that I actually saw, I haven't seen that many, just a handful. This is Steve Carell in Irresistible, which is, um, let's see, directed by Jon Stewart, also has Chris Cooper and Rose Byrne. Uh, a very funny, satirical movie about uh, today's political climate, the, the media, some of the... Uh, the sort of machinations by the media and, and it's it's brilliant in that it, it's another film that it's it takes you in a direction and then it completely changes great surprise in this film and uh very well done says a lot about modern times and uh kind of 
you know, something we all, I think, I think a lot of us would need to see this movie and it has a lot of things to teach us, but in a very funny, very, uh, very clever way. All right. So now a couple of things that I picked up at Big Lots that I wanted to recommend. No, not Big Lots, Dollar Tree. Of course, we're all, we're all going to Dollar Tree, right? We're all, uh, investigating uh, their stacks of movies they have every month. This is a movie called Madtown, which uh, I had never heard of. And I was just blown away by how good this was. I was really surprised. It's uh, It stars a kid named, a kid, a young actor, let's see, named Milo Vin Ventimiglia, okay? Also has actors like Rachel Melvin, Amanda Ade. John Billingsley and Benita Fredricci. Now, but John Billingsley is the only name that I knew in this film. Of course, he was in uh, Star Trek Enterprise as the character Phlox. And I've seen John Billingsley at some Star Trek conventions. Very cool guy, very funny and, and very uh, responsive to the fans. And his wife in the film is played by his wife in real life, Benita Fredricci. Okay. Now, this was made in 2016 in Cleveland, Ohio, of all places, directed by a guy named Charles Moore and wasn't released uh, until 2018, very briefly in the United States. So it didn't really do much, but um, I was really surprised at how good this is. A young man is um, trying to put his life together after his older sister has been released from prison after 20 years because she killed their parents. Okay, so she comes to live with him and he has a very complicated life. He's trying to start a new job at a restaurant. And uh, it, we, we delve into their relationship, his efforts to start a new life, and also with things that happened in the past. It's very, very well done. I was, I was quite surprised. So highly recommend it. Another film that I picked up at Dollar Tree, which I liked very much and was quite surprised by, something called Trespass, directed by Joel Schumacher, starring Nicolas Cage and Nicole Kidman as a married couple who are living in this beautiful house, um, sort of way out in the middle of nowhere uh, with their teenage daughter. And they get invaded by, I think it's, uh, four people, three or four people who want to steal money that this guy has. This guy is a, a diamond dealer. Nicholas Cage is a diamond dealer and supposedly is incredibly wealthy. Well, what happens is as the story goes on and, and the uh, invasion gets more visceral we find all kinds of deep dark secrets between uh the characters the, the married couple and some of the characters who are doing the invasion it's really a very complicated plot quite well done it's quite a surprise and this is a film that i picked up uh, at dollar tree starring denzel washington it's called ramon uh, uh, roman j israel esquire and i i really I have to admit that I have not seen that many films starring Denzel Washington, which is a, a failure on my part because he is a very good actor. This is a, this is an excellent performance. I guess he was nominated for three awards, an Oscar, Golden Globe, and uh, something else. Um, film did not do very well, but it's it's extremely fascinating, very convoluted plot, and he he completely disappears both emotionally and physically into this character. You would not even think that you're looking at Denzel Washington, you know? He plays a, a lawyer who is kind of living in the past. Um, he, he dresses in kind of a 1970s uh, style of clothing and hairstyle and is not not very much a people person. So in his, his two-man law firm, he is the one who stays in the background and prepares all the briefs and does all the, the desk work while the, the man that he um, is in the law firm with, who is a, a very well-known educator and civil rights lawyer, is the one who goes into the courtroom. Well, that gentleman passes away, and uh, Roman J. Israel is uh, sort of put into the limelight. He goes to work for a law firm uh, owned by Colin Farrell, who was a student of the, the civil rights activist and uh, decides to give Roman J. Israel a chance because he had worked with this man that he admires so much. Very interesting characterization by, by both of these guys. They have a lot of chemistry with each other and uh, quite a surprise, quite a surprise how good it was. And for a dollar, what the hell? Also, I picked up this, this movie from 1968 called Night of the Following Day, starring Marlon Brando, Richard Boone, uh, Rita Moreno, and Pamela Franklin. It's all about um, 
a, a kidnapping that takes place. Uh, Brando, Boone, and Rita Moreno, and another another character, they kidnap a, a young wealthy woman, played by Pamela Franklin, and they're just going to you know try to extort money from her family, and it just it's kind of a slow start. Uh, all the details of the kidnapping and how these people are relating to each other and the, all their plans of, uh, you know, how they're going to get the money and all this stuff. It, it's very, very slow and methodical. And it takes Brando a long time to kind of kind of warm up. But when he does, it's fantastic. And, and uh, very good acting by everybody concerned. Pamela Franklin doesn't say very much. She's just kind of a, a, a victim and a very silent victim all through the film. But uh, good acting by Richard Boone and very good by Rita Moreno. So I remember this title from 1968, but I never saw the film. But you just don't forget a title like that. Very interesting movie. And finally, my my favorite young actor, my favorite actor of the modern age is Ethan Hawke. And he also directs films every once in a while. He directed this, which I found at Dollar Tree. And I picked it up just because it had his name on it. It's um, based on... Um, a songwriter and, and a, a sort of country folk singer and songwriter named Blaze Foley, someone I had never heard of, but I, I guess he was a real person that th this was all based on, and they use his music. And he's played by uh, another singer, an actor-singer named Ben Dickey, who I never heard of. And uh, we have people like uh, Alia Shawkat playing uh, his wife, who was, uh, of course, also based on a real person. Her name was Sybil Rosen, and she helped write the film along with Ethan Hawke and uh, give all the details about this Blaze Foley. I guess he was kind of a kind of a hard luck guy who um, came to a bad end, but he wrote some really fascinating music. We have also actors like uh, Josh Hamilton, Charlie Sexton. Very interesting. Oh, Chris Christopherson is also in it. Um, very interesting little film, kind of a somber, quiet little film. But uh, I, I bought it because I like Ethan Hawke, and he did a very good job. And I guess he's in this very briefly as a DJ, but I swear I couldn't find him anywhere. So maybe he was just a DJ on a radio or something. I really don't know, but I was quite surprised at how good this was, too. So it's been a, it's been a period of some great surprises, uh, very good films that I'm happy to recommend to you. So let me know if you've seen any of these and what you think. Uh, comments are welcome, and I will see you later.